Hey, good morning. <clears throat> um, excuse the voice here. I uh, my allergies are kicking in, but good morning to all of you out there in Facebook land. This is Brother Dana again, coming to you live from Chicago. Uh, I just wanted to do another video, uh, following up even on yesterday morning's video. It it just amazes me how everybody's trying to find this motive of this white man that um shot all these individuals in Las Vegas. And, I, and I'm just thinking to myself, it's such a double standard. Because why is it that every time one of my black brothers gets shot, they don't look at the motive behind the police officer. They're not looking behind the motive of our criminal injustice system. But they always say, I need to know the whole story first. Well, let me say then what I believe is the whole story here. White America is reaping what you sow. So what is the motive? The motive behind the shooter that shot these innocent white people in Las Vegas is the same motive that shoots innocent black men in our United States, which is the same motive that puts our black men in correctional facilities, treating them like they are guilty before they have trial, even though it says that, that one is innocent until proven guilty. The same motive. The difference is, is the motive is now being turned upon ourselves. So we're going out here trying to find the motive of this white man and how this singular white man could do what he did to all these innocent white people. What was his motive? I sure wish white America would have done that over all these years to ask each and every single person that shot and has killed our innocent black men and women, what was your motive? But instead, they always turn it around and say, I need to know the whole story first. So again, I'm telling you the whole story. It's the same motive. It's evilness. And, and the difference is, though, that we are going to begin to reap the harvest of, the own, of our own evilness within our own people. See, white America wants to always look at our black brothers and sisters as if they are from the root evil. And, and that's, that's what we believe. See, we believe that, that you as blacks are born evil. You're born wild. And, and, it, and it is us whites that have brought you into civilization. We're the ones that have made you become civil. But us white people are born decent, good, loving, kind individuals. So that when you see a young black man running... The chances of that black man being one who is good is one out of ten. Versus the chance of a white man being bad is only one out of ten. That's why we shoot you because the chances are you're bad. Because you are not the one of the, you know, one percent that has changed. That's why you always hear white people say, well, this black person isn't like the rest of them. What? So anyway, I wanted to share with you this morning, you know, how that angers me. And I get some text messages and I've gotten some emails about how my fellow white brothers and sisters feel like I'm shaming the white race. And my, my response to that is you feel sh you should feel shame. You should feel shame that our black brothers and sisters are putting in these jails, not yet gone to trial, but treated like an animal or even worse than. You should feel shame that every time a black individual is shot, you don't look at the motive of the shooter, but you sit back and say, well, I'm not going to say anything till I get the whole story because the black individual probably did something that deserved it. It's a double standard. So the motive is the same thing that, you know, and we want to say that this is the largest massacre in the United States thus far. No, 
It's the largest massacre of people that this country values. But it is not the largest massacre. The largest massacre first started when we murdered millions of Native American Indians. But that's right. They're not valued. Then the next massacre has been when we have raped and murdered millions and millions of Africans who now are our black brothers and sisters in this country. But wait, you're right. They're not valued. And then let's look at even Black Wall Street down near Tulsa, Oklahoma, where whites were jealous of the prosperity of our fellow black brothers and sisters. And so within a day or so, they massacred and killed hundreds, if not thousands of innocent blacks who were living their lives in Black Wall Street. But that's right. That's a massacre of animals, which is not equal to the massacre of white people. But this is my challenge. And yes, I know some people say I'm angry. I am angry. I'm very angry. I'm very angry. What I'm trying to do is call out to my father, Yah, to ask him that my motives would be righteous, just like Yahshua, or as others call Jesus, flipped over the tables when he saw the injustice of the religious people taking advantage of those who traveled to Jerusalem. So yes, I am angry. I'm very angry, but anger is powerful when it's channeled in the right direction. And then my white people want to say that, that you are making us feel shame. You should feel shame. But see, I don't feel shame anymore. Because I've acknowledged, accepted, and repented of what we have done to our black brothers and sisters. So now instead of feeling shame, I feel that anger. I feel that anger when I have white men who refuse to walk the streets in our black communities, but yet will run to the prison system to bring the hope of the gospel. Well, why don't you bring this hope to the, the, the incorrectness and the injustices of our system? But see, you're, you're just like those Christians in our early days that brought the gospel to the slaves that were chained up but yet refuse to speak out on their behalf due to the injustices. And white people, you don't understand racism isn't just because you call a black person an N-word or because you say, oh, I wouldn't want to see a black person lynched. That just because you feel that way doesn't mean you're not racist. How do you know if you're racist? As I shared before, nobody knows if they're racist or the extent of your racism until you put yourself in a situation where you're faced with the, what's in your heart. And if you've never lived in a black community, if you've never lived amongst blacks, and I put it this way, you refuse to look into a black mirror to find out how much white racism and supremacy lies in you. Because every time our blacks cry out for justice, you're the first one to ignore them. So are you racist? Yes, you are. Are you feeling shame right now because of how I speak? Then yes, you have racial issues inside your heart. Because when you repent and when you acknowledge, then it is only the enemy that tries to make you feel shame. So if you're feeling shame, it's probably because you haven't repented of what you know to be true. And that this country does not allow our black brothers and sisters to be free and they are not valued as equal human beings. So, what is the motive? It's the same motive that kills our innocent black men. Oh, but, 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 but Brother Dana, you know, the cops don't go after innocent people. So there must be a reason why the cops go after these black individuals. So they can't be that innocent. That's why I want to know the rest of the story. Well, again, let me tell you the rest of the story. Do you think we white people are innocent? Do you think us white people are innocent of evil? We are the, the kings of evilness. Look at our history. Look at our history, okay? And then now look at our present. But again, you don't want to accept the present. You don't want to answer the question to why our men at Cook County Jail here, who are waiting trial, 
are treated worse than a bunch of animals. I even read today some of the amendments and it said that that individuals in this nation should not be humiliated or or excessive force put upon them or torture while they're in the hands of the crem of the justice system. Wow, do you know that Michael Sanders is a young man, not a young man, he's my age. I've been walking with him for 19 years who was falsely accused of raping and murdering two white women. After how many years he was found guilty and sentenced to life plus 65 years. Now, he's never been in trouble, never been in trouble all these years in prison. But then a few weeks ago, I got a letter from him and they put him down in isolation, down in a hole. And I found out why. Because he had great favor, he would be walking around doing hospice and other things because of the man of Yah, who he is. Well, all of a sudden, a cell phone was found in the prison system where, where Michael Sanders is, is in Joliet, Illinois. And because of the freedom of the movement that he has, he was questioned and they brought him in because they figured he knew something about this cell phone. Well, when he said, I know nothing about it, you know what they did? They took his glasses off his face and I have now refused to give them back to him and said, until you confess, we're taking your glasses. That's humane. Should we feel shame about that white America? Absolutely. And then they put him down in the hole. No evidence based that he had anything to do with it. But there was no evidence that he raped and murdered two women either. And now he's spending the rest of his life in prison. So what is the motive behind this shooter? It's the same motive that has cut down our Native American Indians. It's the same motive that doesn't go to Puerto Rico because they're worthless people. It's the same motive that looks upon the, the those that were in New Orleans and the help was refused to come their way. It's the same motive that shoots and kills our black men and women. And, and, and we want to know the whole story. It's the same motive that our that this country has done to destroy and to hold down our black brothers and sisters. But see, the difference is, and the only difference is here, is that the other end of this motive is our own people. People perish for a lack of knowledge and wisdom. Well, guess what? The knowledge and wisdom that us white folk need to embrace is that we are a bunch of evil people and we have a history of being evil. And that is the truth. And when you know that truth, it'll set you free according to the words of Jesus. So embrace this truth, white America. We're evil. We've done evil things. And now your God is going to allow that same evilness to come upon us because what you reap, what you sow, is what you reap. What you, If you live by that sword, now you're going to die by that sword. So thank you for tuning in. Please hit me up, One Love Society. And I want to say this to you as my black brothers and sisters. One thing you'll see us white people do, we band together. We band together when stuff happens like this. Look at the thousands of people that were there in line to give blood. But see, you have believed the lies that we have placed in your mind. That you have accepted the truth that your brothers that are out on these streets doing what they're doing are doing it because they're no good, they're lazy, they're invaluable. But you have to change that mindset We've made you believe that. They're not worthless. David went to the cave and in there he found the men that became the greatest army ever to be and they were lawbreakers. And I'm not saying that all our men out on these streets are lawbreakers. They have a record. But because they have a record doesn't mean they're a lawbreaker. It just means they live in a society that gives them a record to give them an image or a value of a lawbreaker. But why do we consider them lawbreakers when we know that our justice system is far from being just to you, my black family? 
So we have to change our mindset. And we have to come together. Those guys out on the street need to be seen as business owners. Right now, they're just being a business owner in a society that calls it wrong. But once that weed and once those drugs are legal, then my white people become millionaires on it. While my black brothers out on the street are still being put in jail and prison for it. We need to come together and that is what the movement that I want to start is all about called the One Love Movement. Bringing in the resources of you, the chosen people of Yah. Because I'm telling you the tables are turning. If white America believes we serve a just God, then when does justice begin to come on the actions of what we've done? And most of the white people that tell me that I'm wrong had a classmate from Moody tell me I'm, I'm on some crazy ideology. And so I asked them, where does Deuteronomy 28 come from? Where does it, who, who is it talking about? And what ideology am I crazy about? Because, see, that's another thing I want to ask you as my black brothers and sisters to start doing. Stop defending yourself. When white America wants to tell you that racism is no longer around, I want you to ask them, prove it. How do white people determine whether or not racism is still around? I know why, because everything white folks say is the truth. So be encouraged to know wherever you are in your journey, whether you recognize who you are as Yah's chosen people, or if you're still seeking out and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, right now I'm, I'm, we all need patience in our journey. But one thing I know is true. Your freedom of this slavery and this oppression that you have lived under for over almost 400 years is coming to an end. Your ancestors were first brought as slaves in Jamestown in 1619, maybe 1620. Add 400 years to that, my black brothers and sisters. You get to 2019, 2020. Your ancestors were in slavery under the Egyptians for 400 years. I'm not going to be this prophet that says the immediately when the 400 years comes, it's over. I'm not going to do that. Because I'm not going to be a lying prophet like, like Pat Robertson right now who says that, which doesn't make sense. The shooting in Las Vegas is a result of, of um, us disobeying or, or coming against President Trump. Well, um, I could understand if that's true if it was um, black individuals at a rap concert. But yet he shot down the very people that put him in office. That makes a lot of sense, Pat Robertson. But hey, you're old and you're crazy and you're as much of a racist at the core of your heart than, than the rest of my white family in this country that has not acknowledged the truth of what we have done and are doing. So we need to come together. It's going to get worse. This government's going to stop funding you in in all areas from welfare to everything they're going to turn it off because remember that's what the pharaoh did to your ancestors in egypt he made you worry about that he made you work harder he made you work harder and so now they're going to make you work harder but see what white folk don't understand because of a lack of wisdom see People perish for a lack of wisdom. You as my black brothers and sisters may perish because you lack the wisdom of who you are. But see, my white people are going to perish because we also lack the wisdom of who you are. And us white people are going to perish because we lack the wisdom to know that it was you, my black brothers and sisters, that created this nation. <laughs> Ask a white person about the inventions that they use on a daily basis that were invented by a black brother and sister and most of them will have no clue. So they'd have to put their cell phone away. They'd have to stop using the internet. I mean, I can go on and on and on. So let us band together. Unity is what my people have done to keep you from being powerful and from rising up. You have to unify. I cannot, again, I can teach a man how to be a man, but I cannot teach 
a black man how to be a black man. You can do that. I've not been in your shoes. I cannot tell you what to do or how to do it. I can only tell you that you need to do it. And I can only tell you the things that we, my white brothers and sisters and my white family has done to tear down. Read the Willie Lynch letters. The number one thing that we did was to break the strong land. And it said that when you want to break a wild horse or a black man, the first thing you need to do is you need to change their mindset so that they're no longer aware of their natural state. Because in your natural state, you recognize who you are and you're powerful and you have the ability to resist anything that comes against who you are in the natural state. Well, we've taught you that in your natural state, you're a lunatic. You're a wild beast and an animal like that of a wild horse. But the reality is in your natural state, you're kings and queens. So may Yah bless you. May God bless you. And may you know that your redemption is near. Your God has not forgotten you. Your God has not forgotten you. Coming from somebody on the other side, your God has not forgotten you. I see it. He's coming back to redeem you. Be encouraged. Connect with me. Let us work together at this. Let's start standing in line for each other. That's the only way things are going to change. The government is not going to bring you what you want. Because again, the boundaries of who you are and who we are are now being clouded. So now we're going to have to step up, white America, to let you know as blacks, the boundary is this. You submit to us. We are supreme. You are not. So may, may, may you be blessed and uh, peace, shalom be upon each and every single one of you. Thank you for tuning in. And I'm open. I'm open to you. You're my, you, you as my black brothers and sisters, I live here on the west side of Chicago. And I've dedicated, those of you that are just starting to tune in, I've dedicated my life after being beat up by a gang back in March of 1994. And after they beat me up, they said, welcome to racism. And those words penetrated my heart. And so after it penetrated my heart of the pain that was behind those guys that beat me up, I had to be on this journey for almost 24 years to understand the depth of our society and our racism and our oppression and white privilege and white supremacy that has put you in this bucket. And so no longer should we look at, at crabs at a bucket, and I'm not calling you crabs, but as an analogy, when you look and judge crabs in a bucket for how they behave, my question is this, who the hell put the crabs in a the bucket? They were never meant to live there. See, that's the mindset that even you have begun to adopt because we've put it in you and, and we've actually made it where we speak truth and you have to doubt everything that comes up in you and questions what we deem as truth. That is why do not defend yourself. When a white person tells you something, you turn it around and tell them to defend you. You tell them to prove that racism is gone. You tell them to prove that there's no injustice in our correctional facility. You tell them to prove. And watch them walk away because they can't prove it. They just want you to shut up and believe it. So anyway, with those words, I got to get to work. <laughs> Bless you and know that I'm honored to be embraced and I'm honored that Yah has opened my heart to see who you really are, kings and queens. Again, tune in even on Sundays and I post it on my Facebook page. Lady Lena and myself are doing a tour called the Transparent Tour, Black and White. And the topic right now is from, from Kings to Slaves. The breaking of our strong black men. So tune in on Sundays um, for that. But um, bless you. And, and be encouraged. And um, we'll talk soon. Alright, this is Brother Dana coming to you live from Chicago. Um, what an honor to know who you are. Yah's chosen people. Alright.
Good day.